This video is about the FBAR filing, what it is, who is required to file, and the explanation of the steps as I file mine. The report of foreign bank and financial accounts is known as FBAR, and the report you need to file is called the FinCEN 114. Most accountants can file this report for you, but if you have just a few simple accounts like some checking or brokerage accounts, you can file it yourself and save some money. You need to file the FinCEN 114 if you had foreign financial accounts that had aggregate balances over $10,000 during the calendar year. So even if you had 10 accounts with $1,000 each, you have to file. The total value has to be 10,000 or more. Also, you have to report what the highest value or so-called high water mark was in each account during the year. So, how exactly do they define a foreign financial account? Well, they define it as a financial account that includes but is not limited to a securities, brokerage, savings, demand, checking, deposit, time deposit, or other maintained account with a financial institution. A financial account also includes commodity futures or options accounts, or even an insurance policy with a cash value, such as a whole life insurance policy, or an annuity policy with a cash value, and shares in a mutual fund or a similar pooled fund. So basically, it's any kind of bank, checking account, mutual fund, uh, brokerage, commodity options, anything like that. What it isn't though, what's not included, so to speak, is if you have cash or precious metals, gold or silver coins, uh, physically in a safe deposit box in some overseas bank or even in a house overseas or something like that you're not required to report that also foreign real estate is not required to be reported so if you have an apartment or a house overseas or cash or precious metals overseas those are not required to be reported so what is considered a foreign financial account and what is not if you have an account at a branch of an American company located in a foreign country, that is considered a foreign account. So if you went and opened a Citibank account at a branch in China, that would be a foreign account. Conversely, if you open an account in the US at a branch of a foreign bank, that is not considered a foreign account. So if you opened an account at an HSBC branch in New York City, that would not be considered a foreign account. When you report the balances in the FinCEN 114 form, they have to be in US dollars. So if your foreign accounts are denominated in anything other than US dollars, you need to convert them into US dollars. Now, you don't need to check the exchange rate for the whole year to figure out the high watermark in your accounts. You can look up the official yearly exchange rate for any country at the Bureau of Fiscal Service. These rates are accepted by both FinCEN and the IRS. So you can use them when you have to fill out the IRS form 8939 for your taxes as well. So. Just take the high watermark in your account and convert it into US dollars using the official yearly rate. So let's see how we actually get that official foreign currency rate for the year. You go to www.fiscal.treasury.gov and you see it's official website of the United States Government Bureau of the Fiscal Service. So services for the general public and then scroll down currency exchange rates 
and you can get historical current historical rates or current rates so we're going to go with current rates and so I guess the most likely account uh, that a US person would have would probably be a Canadian bank account or brokerage account so let's go look the official rate for the Canadian dollar is 1.3 so for every one dollar you get 1.3 Canadian dollars so let's say you had thirteen thousand dollars in your Canadian bank account in Canadian dollars you would divide that by 1.3 and you would come up with ten thousand US dollars which means you need to report the FinCEN 114 so that's generally how you do the conversion of course um, you have to do the high water mark so if you just have a bank account that earns some interest or even no interest um, or a little interest your high water mark is generally going to be the last month of the year so just get a statement from your last month of the year from your bank and use that amount for your high water mark now if you have a brokerage account with stocks and stuff that change value over the year you're gonna to have to look at the whole year's worth of statements to figure out what the high water mark is once you figured out the high water marks in your accounts in US dollars now's time to file the FinCEN 114 you go to www.fincen.gov and that's the financial crimes enforcement network and you go here to e-filing and it says you're now being taken to FinCEN's e-filing website. So let's go and you're going to file foreign bank and financial accounts, FBAR. Now, this page is for individual FBAR filers only because people like CPAs and attorneys, they may file batch F bars of multiple um, hundreds of them or something uh, this is only for individuals and you can do it in PDF form or online form now I've been doing this F bar for I think this is the tenth year ninth or tenth year now and it started out where you were only allowed to do the PDF form and I had a problem with it every single year I had to contact customer support and everything like that because these PDF files were such a pain you have to I don't know lock it and sign it and all kinds of stuff and if you don't have the right Adobe Reader it, it's such a pain in the butt uh, so I don't recommend it I recommend doing the online form and while the problem with the online form is a one-time submission so you have to do it in one shot you can't save it and come back to it but at the end of the submission you can download a regular read-only PDF of all the information so that's your proof that you filed the FinCEN 114 so just do the online click start now this is basically it okay you have these different sections so contact information email address name whatever uh, FBAR does not allow you to save your progress okay so you have to do it all in one shot I, I don't know if there is a timeout amount where if you don't do anything in 15 minutes or something they lock you out I'm not sure but if I was you, I would have all your information ready, meaning your bank accounts, the account numbers, and that full address of each branch where you have your accounts. So here you put your name, and it says if this report is being filed late, you actually have, uh, you can file late onto like October 15th. Normally you have to file by April 15th, but you can get an extension without I think even putting a request in uh, so it's a little bit lax with that but if I was you I would make sure you get it in before April 15th just to avoid any hassles 
or potential fines or something like that if you forget. So you see you have these sign the form buttons, remove signature, submit and all this stuff. Okay, and so for most people, um, they're gonna do kind of the simple form and so that would just be filling out your information, social security number, um, you know, form of identification, passport, driver's license, whatever, uh, address, all this kind of stuff. And here's, do you have a financial interest in 25 or more financial accounts? Hopefully you say no. <laughs> um, and uh, does the filer have signature authority, but no financial interest in 25 or more financial accounts? So like, there's no way you can get around this stuff. So even if you just have, you know, signature authority on some account or 50% interest or voting rights or something like that, there's, you know, you're if you're trying to get around this stuff, I, I don't think it's a good idea um, and you probably won't. So just, I guess, be honest about it. But this is most of the stuff that I fill out all the time. So. It's just maximum account value type of account, bank, securities, other, financial institution name, um, and the address, the city, postal code, state, region, country, whatever. And so if you have more than one of them, uh, you can do multiple because you can add, add them here, I guess. After you fill one out, you add it and there's another one below it. So I have multiple accounts, so I need to do a few of them. But after that, um, then it becomes financial accounts that are owned jointly, right? You fill that out if you have that. And then it's no financial interest, but signature authority and all kinds of, you know, special cases and stuff like that. So basically I just fill out, you know, I just have checking accounts and brokerage accounts. So I'm just in the first section, the part two, and I just fill out how many I have and then go ahead and save it and submit it and sign it and get my PDF uh, proof that I download and keep in digital form. And that's pretty much it. So I filled in my email address, phone number and name, and now I'm gonna click start F bar. So filing name, I would say something like 2019 calendar year F bar. If this report is being filed late, blah, blah, blah. Forgot to file, did not know. Okay. And so this is you sign the form when you're done and then submit. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill this stuff out now. Okay, so I filled everything out and now I'm ready to sign the form. I acknowledge that I'm electronically signing the BSA report, okay. <laughs> this thing go okay it went we have received your submission click here below to download a copy of your f bar please confirm blah 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 you receive this notification status of your submission so it's a little weird i clicked the sign and it didn't really do anything to acknowledge that i signed except for that little pop-up window so little confusing there like you're not sure if it went or if there's some pop-up that got blocked or something like that um, but in this case there wasn't but like I said with the PDF uh, submission form it's even way more hectic um, and my criticism of this thing is that if they can make this online form they could very easily give you a username and a password and you just log in every year 
because most people's information and accounts don't change from year to year, just the amounts do. So why do we have to fill in the information all over again? We should just be able to log in and just click a button that says everything has stayed the same from last year except for the amounts and just change the you know the dollar amounts and hit save and be done with it but you know government bureaucracy or whatever you want to call it so um you know it's never fun to do this stuff and you always have the threat of some kind of crazy fines if you report the wrong amount or something like that so um you know, I always feel better once I finally get everything done and saved and I know that's out of the way. So this is what it looks like to go through the steps of the F bar and filing the FinCEN 114 form. I hope you liked this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up and leave a comment. Let me know if you've done this form yourself online and if you prefer the online or the PDF version. So if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to my channel and thank you for watching.